The exposure triangle. It's nothing like the Bermuda Triangle. Well, maybe it's a little bit like the Bermuda Triangle. People do get lost in there and never find their way back out. So, let's talk about exposure first off. What is exposure? Whether you're shooting on a digital camera or you're shooting on a film camera, you have a sensitive surface. That could be your digital sensor, it could be your piece of film. Exposure is all about how much light you let into that sensitive surface. If you let in too much light, it's overexposed and the image will be too bright. If you let in too little light, the image will be underexposed and the image will be too dark. We're looking for a balanced exposure and we get that by using the light meter in our camera. So, how do we let light into the camera? We've got two ways of letting light in. We've got the shutter and the aperture. And to make a triangle, we've got ISO, and that is your camera's sensitivity to light. So let's start there. Your camera's sensitivity to light is ISO, and most modern cameras have a range of from about 100 ISO up to 12,800, some even have more. The thing to remember about ISO is, the higher you turn it up, the more noisy and grainy your image gets. So try and keep your ISO as low as possible for best quality images. So the ISO controls your camera's sensitivity to light, but how do we control light entering the camera? Well, we use the shutter and the aperture. So let's have a look at the shutter. The shutter is built into the body of the camera, and most modern cameras allow you a range of a very long exposure like 30 seconds to a very fast exposure like 1 8,000th of a second. So let's have a look at this image here. This is a very fast shutter speed image. The balloon is the water balloon has just been burst and you can see the water exploding from the balloon. You've captured a tiny, tiny slice of time. So for an image like this, you have to use a very fast shutter speed. Alternatively, this seascape here is a very slow shutter speed. This was shot with the camera on a tripod and it's a 30 second exposure. Very long exposure. And that's what adds to the um, dreamy, milky kind of look of the sea in that particular picture. So the shutter decides how long a slice of time we're capturing and how much light we let into the camera on a time basis. So let's have a look at the aperture. The aperture is built into the lens and different lenses have different apertures. This Canon Nifty 50 has a decently wide aperture at f1.8. Just remember that the f1.8 is a wide aperture. That's ideal for shooting portraits. You'll get somebody's face really sharp and you'll get a very shallow depth of field, a blurry background. So the aperture of the lens affects how much appears to be in focus. Using a very wide aperture gives you a shallow depth of field, and that can be ideal for portraits, as I said. You also, using a very narrow aperture can be ideal for landscape photography. If you close the aperture down to something like f32, a really tiny aperture, well, that will, um, will allow for much more of the image to appear to be in focus. So there are the three ways in which we control the light entering the camera. So now that we understand the effect that our ISO, aperture and shutter has on our image, it becomes easier to make those choices when balancing your exposure. At least you know that if you have a wide open aperture, you're gonna have a soft background. If you choose a long shutter speed, you're gonna have motion blur in your image. So if you try to make these choices from more of an artistic point of view, Think about what do I want my image to look like before you start wrestling with the camera and the exposure settings. I think it becomes easier to make a good exposure and to get the kind of image that you want. So get out there, take some pictures. If this has been at all helpful, please like and subscribe. And um, we'll see you soon for more great videos. Thanks a lot and take care.